I just saw a life-changing movie. It was awesome. It had a girl that's so beautiful. She has porcelain skin. Platinum blonde hair. She can fight. She can dance. She can do everything. She can shoot a gun. She can jump around in midair and defy seemingly gravity. I want to tell you, it's called Sucker Punch. It was the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Well, I shouldn't say that. It, lately, it's the best movie I've seen. The reason is, it's so visually stimulating. It's like my head's floating in midair. <laughs> it's the floating head. Say hello to the floating head. By the way, I'm sporting new glasses. That's the new look. Rectangles out. See, I'm always on the cutting edge of societal evolution. That's right. This is the new look. See? Ultimate retro. See how there's a keyhole design right in the middle? I can't even see it. If you look like that, it doesn't... But the girl is beautiful. I don't even know who she is. She's called Baby Doll in the movie. But it is so cool. It's about a girl that's abused. Okay? She comes home to find out her mother's dead. The creepy stepdad is in the room, smiling that she's dead. So you don't even know the story there. He probably killed her. They never explain it. He probably killed her to get the inheritance. So anyways, she goes and cries in the other room, and they show her at the funeral. And while she's at the funeral, um, uh, the, the old, old guy, again, the stepdad, the creepy old stepdad, is smiling. Then they show him reading the will and testament, and it turns out that he's uh, not even in the will. She bequeathed everything to her two daughters. Uh, I, I can't go into the whole movie, but it's so visually stimulating and pleasing. If you're a fan of sci-fi, go see it. If you're a fan of video games, go see it. If you play video games, go see it. If you're a fan of monsters and dragons and robots and electricity and visually compelling stuff, like sci-fi, art, fantasy girls, all that stuff. All the girls are in the movie. The whole cast is girls. It's all girls. It's girls in an asylum. What, what's better than crazy girls, you know what I mean? But the thing is, it's done so well, it's like an alternate reality within her mind. And it, it, it's like she creates this world to escape from the, the, the dreariness of what is around her so that she can accomplish what she knows she can do. And it's really herself, probably. They talk about a guardian angel, and really the, the whole thing is, when she gets to the end, there's like a surprise ending, so I don't want to tell you, but, but it, it's, 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 it's not really like sad, but it's, it leaves you like, I was like emotionally, you know, I had a lot of feeling in that movie, and it was really good. I mean, there's so many good things in it. There's action throughout. Um, it's just amazing. She has the ability to... Well, anyway, she, uh, what happens is she, she sees the old creepy guy angry because he now he knows he's cut out of the will. So he breaks into her bedroom. She tries to close the door. She scratches him uh, under the face, so good for her. He, he pushes her away. Then he goes, okay, I'll get you later. He doesn't really say that, but he pushes her in the room, and he locks her in with the key. And she looks through the keyhole, and it has that close-up of the shot of the keyhole. And she's looking, and she sees... Her little sister, he's going in there, and he looks back at the key you know, through the door like he's going to abuse her or kill her. I don't know what he's going to do. So she she climbs out. And what's really cool visually is it's all black and white kind of and real dreary and dirty and filthy and like something from yesteryear. It's like you're living in the past, like in the 30s or 40s, where everything was miserable and cars were ugly and weird looking and everything. So... She, she's climbing, the next scene, she's climbing out in the rain, you know, it's real dramatic, she's climbing down this drain pipe, and you think she's just trying to escape, but no, they, they fade back to the old guy, it looks like he's throwing her down on the ground, the little girl's just like, oh, her sister, you know, she's a little, real tiny girl, um, and she comes in, and you see a gun, man, pointing right at his head, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, shoot the bastard! Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, that, but that's what you feel like because he deserves it. So, anyways, instead of instead of, instead of hitting him, she misses because she's not a professional shooter, you know. And it and it, and it ricochets and it, and it kills the sister and and it, and it kind of messes her up. And then the next scene, the dad just uses that as an excuse to to check her into the asylum. 
because he wants to get all the inheritance. So he's paying off the orderly there to fudge the records a little bit to give her a frontal lobotomy. Old alcoholic said, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. But that's, that's an old joke. But they basically put a spike right through behind your eye here and they chop right into your brain so that you feel no pain. You'd be just like... With aphasia. They used to give lobotomies in the old, old days. They thought it helped people. They were crazy. And if you ever saw Planet of the Apes, you ever see Planet of the Apes, the original? Well, that's what happened to, to uh, one of the astronauts. He got a, a frontal lobotomy. He forgot who he was and who his friends were. So they couldn't even rescue him. He was just like... Because they didn't want evidence in that movie of that human beings had a brain that could think because their religion was run by the orangutans and they believed that man was not capable of having a soul. It was kind of a play on what some religions do to people. They, they brainwash you into thinking certain things and then you, 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 you actually will tw twist even science and fact around your delusion just to keep it. Or the people that are in charge of, of finding facts, they try to hide it from people so they keep them dumb. But anyways, i got to probably leave this area. Um, Got to keep on the run, you know. I don't make so many faces. I used to be the Elvis Lip King, man. Although well, Elvis looked a lot much better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got the hyper Elvis though. Nothing's got this on me, but ah, that's Elvis with the palsy. Okay, anyways, um. A surveyor might be surveying here. I'm going to have to probably move the bus. Let's see what he says. No, he's leaving. All right. Anyway, it is awesome. The girl, I'm just like infatuated with the girl. And she hardly even talks, but she's got these real supple lips. They're like, and she can fight, man. What the, one of the scenes is, what happens is, the, there's unconventional uh, therapy going on in this in this in this in this asylum. So there's a Polish lady that's the doctor. She's the real doctor, and she has them act out things. So they. But the thing is, you don't really see what happens. It just, she just closes her eyes. They force her to dance, right? So she has to dance, but you don't actually see the dance. She closes her eyes, you know, again because. And when she opens her eyes, she's in a whole other world, and it's awesome. She's standing behind uh, in front of this big Chinese like area like you see in a video game, like where like the master would be. That, and there's a guy in there that knows everything. And he, he's there. He says, you're tracking snow into my place. She says, want me to take off my shoes? She has like a little schoolgirl outfit, which is really hot. I mean, it's just awesome. And if you're a guy, you probably would like the movie a lot. I mean, I, I'm just like, I'm just fascinated by the movie. I love the way the filmography, what do you call it? The filmography, the, the, the visualizations of the movie are just awesome. They're getting so good in these movies, you don't know what's fact or fiction. You just go like, wow, look at that, explode, look at that falling, look at that. And it, what happens is he, he, she goes in there, and this is the key to the whole movie. This guy is like the, in her brain, and he tells her, there's five keys to your survival. And he goes, what are you looking for? So he said, what do you want? She goes, I, 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 he goes, well, more importantly, he says, well, what are you looking for? And then he goes, she goes, I would like to get out of here. He goes, freedom. It wasn't hard to say, he said, freedom. He said, there's five things you need for freedom. These are the weapons you're going to need. He opens up this thing. She's got like a big old samurai sword. She's got like these real shiny chrome pistols. She's got like some kind of other weapons and things. So he goes, as soon as you touch the weapons, your journey begins. If you have five things, first thing you need is a map. Second thing, it's fire. The third thing, what was the third thing? Third thing is a knife. The fourth thing is the key. And then he and she he didn't say them like that. He just said four things. She goes, I think he said five. He was very good. It's the fifth thing you have to find on your own. Because only you can do it. And it's individual. And it's, it comes with a personal sacrifice, and you have true freedom. So it's a really touching movie. I mean, it's really well written, well done. This is uh, my movie review of Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch rules, man! If you haven't seen Sucker Punch, go see it. It's awesome. It is a fun movie. The girl's skin is just so clean. Look, I mean, I, I like girls 
you know, the, like there's something about the porcelain skin, like even whiter than mine. It's just awesome. She has like this. I don't know if they they painted or what, but she is just so white, like alabaster. She's just like, just amazing. And she just, she's just awesome. I mean, I don't know who she is, but she's awesome. She's just. <laughs> That's all I can say. It was a really good movie. It's affected me, man. And then there's a message at the end. And you have to see the movie. The message is that you, you have all the tools. You have all the weapons. Now fight! Fight for your freedom. Please.